clean uh, approach. So that's why it's usually commonly found in the custom test contract. And the thing that makes Seratia special is the uh, prodigozine. It's the special uh, pigment that causes yeah, the red right color of the column. So that's why it's so obvious. Yeah. And also, good. there is other ways to distinguish it. And one of those ways is due to three My enzymes. It's DNAs, lipase, and gelatinase, which is three enzymes that are typically present that the uh, uh, bacteria produces. Uh, you want to talk about species? Or the most common species, Serrate uh, is commonly found in grown in platforms, tiles. It's actually not on the tiles, it's the thing between the tiles. What is it called? This, uh, you know, this. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Once established, uh, established complicated, the eradication of the organism uh, is often difficult. It can grow in temperature range ranging from 5 to 40 degrees Celsius and in HP level 5 to 9. Yeah, so uh, I've actually read a, a report about a hospital in the United States to try to get rid of it, and they did a complete uh, like detoxification of, of all the bacteria and everything, and they discovered that one hour later it was already there again. So it's extremely resistant to certain toxins and very difficult to kill, and most likely we all have it in most of the bathrooms. Yes, um, like mentioned before, we have the methyl red test, which is the most common um, test that uh, is the term or determines the presence. And um, generally, it just shows if there's fermentation. If the fermentation is present, then we have methyl red. Uh, now, the sites of infection is urinary tract, respiratory tract, wounds, of, and very, very common, I will show you something just later, is the eye. And there you have conjunctivitis, keratitis, endothelmitis, and the tear duct infection, which can be really nasty. I mean, very, very nasty. You can even lose fish probably if you don't stop. So, like we said, it's uh, very resistant to antibiotics. And one specific is that it has these R factors. And the R factors apparently are some mutagenic, uh, I don't know, DNA coding that enable this bacteria to mutate very fast and therefore achieve uh, immunity against even new antibiotics extremely fast and, and solid. Uh, and like we wrote, blah, 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 it just has more genes to encode the resistance. Uh, and one thing is, for example, that they're considered intrinsically resistant to ampicillin and macrolides and first generation, uh, this is this cephalexine. It's just names of drugs you don't have to know. But, uh, there is also studies that have been done with second or third generation antibiotics, and they've already been immune to it. Uh -huh. Yes, this is a typical uh, picture you can, I think, don't need to explain much. It's pretty uh, obvious. And this is a severe case. And I think that the case study of this was the patient lost the vision. Are you sure? <laughs> Yes, and uh, before I just read a, another case yesterday about this. So usually, um, Seratia is uh, commonly found post-operative, and one patient presented in the emergency room with uh, gangrene, and the leg was already extremely necrotized, etc., etc., so they tried to save some parts of it, and because of the infection in the hospital by Seratia, which was later confirmed, they had to actually amputate, they tried first to amputate the phalanges, then it didn't work, then they amputated more and more up to the point where they amputated the leg up to the knee because they couldn't save it because of this hospitalized noscomial infection. So this is how dangerous actually those hospital infections are. Yep. So just be, be safe and uh, wash your hands. Mm. Thank you.